welcome welcome to this session on lifestyle disease this is the session 2 on lifestyle disease under the course healthy living and fitness in the previous uh, lecture we discussed about the lifestyle diseases which are also known as the non communicable diseases and we have specifically discussed on the cardiovascular disease. We have also discussed about the how we can manage the cardiovascular disease. Now next in this session, we'll discuss about more lifestyle disease. So the first disease in this session is the obesity. This obesity is one of the most common problem which is associated with multiple disorders. Obesity is fueled by unhealthy eating habits, a stressful lifestyle and it is also happens mainly due to the reduced physical activity. If someone has the problem of obesity, that person is likely to suffer from issues such as breathing problem, blood pressure problem, diabetes, cardiovascular disease. Along with all these diseases, the person who is obese attracts many other lifestyle diseases. In India, around 160 million people suffer from obesity, and year by year, the number is growing with 34% of this 160 million. You might have heard the term overweight, which is same as the obesity. These both terms, the overweight and the obesity, they are both used to describe the situation in which the body weight is higher than the recommended for a good optimal health. To be more specific on the overweight, we calculate the body mass index, that is the BMI. And this body mass index is used to classify people into four subclass. The number one class is the underweight, number two, normal, number three, overweight, and number four, obese. Actually, this BMI is commonly used because it is very easy to measure and it also correlates strongly with the percentage of body fat. Why fat? Because excess level of the body fat contribute to a number of health concerns including heart disease, hypertension, diabetes and even some cancers. So when the body fat level increases, the BMI increases. On internet, there are some simulators, there are some calculators which are used to calculate the body mass index. You can just go and put, eat, uh, put the values, your height, weight, and then the body mass index can be calculated. This body mass index is calculated with a measurement that is kilogram per meter square. If it is 18.5, below 18.5 kilogram per meter square then it means that you uh, the person is underweight if bmi index is 18.5 to 24.9 then it is normal weight and if it is above 25 up to 29.9 then that means the person is overweight and if it is 30 or higher that means the person is obese. There are certain factors or causes of the obesity. They can be genetic as well as environmental factors. So if someone is obese, then that person can also manage his or her weight. So establishing or maintaining a healthy body weight requires an understanding of how the body uses food to provide energy. 
If you remember that in the initial classes, we discussed about the food pyramid. In addition, when weight loss is desired, a plan of action is needed for the long term success. Like limit the fast food meals. Also limit the screen time on television or computer. And always remember that don't let the uh, breakfast skip. Increasing the consumption of vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and fat free or low fat milk. Include healthy form of protein in the diet such as lean meat, poultry, fish, bean, eggs, nuts and also limit the consumption of the saturated fats, trans fats, cholesterol, salt and added sugars. In this way, we can control the obese and which is a lifestyle disorder. So now, now the next is diabetes. Now this diabetes is a metabol metabolism disorder that affects the way the body uses food for energy and physical fitness. This is of four types, type 1, type 2, gestational and pre-diabetes. Type 2 is the most common diabetes in the world and is caused by modifiable behavioral risk factors. You have heard this disease that this disease is a common disease which is characterized by the elevated blood glucose level and normally it is also known as high sugar level in the blood which is referred to as high sugar level in the blood. So let me tell you that what actually happened that how this diabetes occur in the body. Or in the blood. So normally, when a person having a meal, after having a meal, some of the food is broken down into glucose, which is a sugar. And then this glucose sugar is transported through the body in the bloodstream. This increases the blood glucose, which trigger the pancreas which is there in the body which is a small organ in the abdomen pancreas this pancreas when it is triggered by the blood glucose to release the insulin insulin is a hormone so this insulin which is a hormone it is needed to move the glucose into the body cells for the energy because insulin helps the glucose to go into the body cells for the energy. Now here the type 1 and type 2 start. That is the diabetes which result from the inability to produce insulin that is known as type 1. That means that as insulin which is which is helping the glucose to go into the blood cells if that insulin become unable to uh, enable to take the glucose, right? To take the glucose into the blood, that means it is type 1. That means the insulin is not producing from the pancreas. If insulin is not producing from the pancreas, that means it is type 1. And if it is it is not used properly, if it is not used properly, then this is known as type 2 diabetes. So we can say that this type 2 diabetes it is due to the non-insulin because the insulin is not properly working and this is associated with poor eating habits and uneven lifestyle choice at present there are more than 40 million people already facing this problem in india And year by year, this number is increasing significantly. So there are some modifiable risk factors. 
just like unhealthy diets. So if we reduce the unhealthy diet, that means we will reduce the diet. Because the prevention is better than cure. And this is one of the lifestyle disease which go for a prolonged time. So it's important to stop at this point only when you are following the unhealthy you know, schedules, unhealthy diet. So modifiable risk factors like the unhealthy diets. So avoid unhealthy diet. Avoid physical inactivity. For this, you have to do activity, you have to do meditation, yoga, exercise, obesity. Obesity is also causing the diabetes, overweightness. Again, I'm telling you that if the BMI index is above 25, that means the overweight is a start, up to 29.9. And about 30, 30 and about 30, the person is said to be obese. High blood pressure is also causing it. So never let your blood pressure go high. Then again, it is also depend on the food habits. High cholesterol. It never goes, uh, try to cut down the trans fat, saturated fats and all. Heavy alcohol use. Avoid heavy alcohol. Psychological stress. Sit with some friends. Sit with, do not avoid the social, you know, gatherings. And all. High consumption of sugar. Sugar is also causing because the diabetes, because it's non dependent on the insulin, but it's non insulin, but uh, it is a high consumption of sugar also play important role in diabetes patient diabetes. Low consumption of fiber. So these are the some of the modifiable risk factors which we can modify and then we can avoid the diabetes. Now the next problem in this uh, lifestyle disorder is the cancer. This cancer is a direct result of the frailing immunity system of the body and a stressful lifestyle is lead. This is happens because of a weak immune system that gives a way to the, to the germs or to the bacteria or the virus, deadly virus to perform their attack on our body or especially the body cell. So that's why you have heard that the cancer is defined as irregular cell growth in our body. And it is caused due to many reasons. It's like some of them, they are like smoking, uh, alcohol, uh, lifestyle choices. Some of the factors, some of uh, the modifiable risk factors, just like Smoking, we can modify them. We can stop smoking, second hand smoke, radiation therapy, just like uh, the MRI, CT scan, especially CT scan, x ray. Right? They also cause the cancer. You cannot go again and again for an x ray. You cannot go again and again for CT scan because they are highly radiation. So, avoiding radiation therapy, being exposed to other stores, chromium, because we are the heavy elements, nickel, arsenic, even suit and tar. And also living in air polluted place, we can also modify that. So we can, we should live in a very clean environment. As number, uh, I just forgot the more than seven million people they die of cancer every year. Now the next is chronic respiratory disease. This chronic respiratory disease, which is known as the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. Remember that this disease is the most underdiagnosed condition. And it is one of the most potent cause of the death globally. With 90% of the death in the low income countries happens because of the COPD, the chronic respiratory disease or we can say chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. This chronic, if talk about the chronic respiratory disease, it is of two types. One is the COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and the second is asthma. Asthma is also the chronic respiratory disease. Now, some of the modifiable risk factors in this are just like cigarette, smoke, dust, chemical environmental, tobacco, 
uh, air pollution, infection. These are some of the modifiable risk factors. Some non-modifiable risk factors just like genetic age can happen also with the genetics in that age. But the modifiable risk factors we can avoid. These are the cigarette smoke, dust, chemical environment, tobacco, smoke, air pollution, and infection. Now, next is the control in the prevention of lifestyle disease. So, an important way of controlling the non communicable disease, or we can say the lifestyle disease, is by controlling the risk factors which are associated with it. In other words, we can say that a number of communicable disease can be prevented by controlling the behavior or the lifestyle habits which are associated with those diseases which we have discussed. So there are a number of low-cost solutions which can be implemented by even government and other which involve, uh, involve people, groups, or NGOs to reduce these common modifiable risk factors. A very important approach which is required that it must be involved, uh, some sector must be involved in it, just like health, finance, education, planning. Why? Just to minimize the impact of these lifestyle diseases on the individual and the society. So people need to change their habits. Why? Because for making their life healthier. We have to remember some points to prevent the occurrence of these lifestyle diseases. These are, we have to take, a, take up the regular exercise like walking, yoga, we can also dance, aerobics, cycling. We should use the staircase instead of lift or a scanner. Do not overeat. Always take a balanced diet at proper meal time. Timing is also very important. Avoid processed and packaged food because uh, which are rich in sugar, fats, salt and calories and low in fiber. Always take good quality of proteins, minerals just like iron and calcium and vitamins. Eat whole grain foods like cereals, like wheat, whole wheat flour, millet, jawar, bajra, and always avoid the refined food like mela. Always try to eat 400 to 500 gram of the seasonal fruit and vegetable every day. Drink plenty of water, minimum 3 liters per day, 3, 4, 5, and practice yoga or meditation just to avoid the stress in it. Keep away from smoking and drinking alcohol and spend less time in sitting and watching the television. Always try to pursue the outdoor games and activities like gardening, playing a sport like football, cricket, badminton. These lifestyle diseases, they are a threat to the social economic aspect of nations globally. So, an appropriate action for their management are needed of the world. So, what we can do, we can first do the proper diagnosis of our problems, screening and treatment of the disease and we should take the preventive measures. What else we can do for the society? We can educate people around us and give them some uh, seminars, some sessions on the healthy lifestyle practice. And this is possible, then this is possible to keep these diseases under control. And this is how we can make a sensible alteration in our lifestyle. I hope that everyone understand that by changing the modifiable risk factors that is which are related to directly our behavior, we can control, we can prevent these lifestyle diseases situations.